Well, here we are. It is time for school. I see all the traffic outside. Of course, I'm talking about High Plains Technology Center, and I've got Katie Shirley, and again, she's got guests. Good morning, Brett. Uh, This morning, I have with me our welding technology instructor, Tracy Borden. Good morning, Tracy. Hello. Um, So, Tracy, tell us how long you've been at High Plains and um, maybe the favorite part of your job. Uh, It's going on 26 years. And uh, what I enjoy the most about my job is I get to be with kids all day and we get to burn stuff. Yeah, that sounds pretty fun. It always uh, makes the smell really unique sometimes at my office. You can tell the welding program's hard at it, which is is great. They're always working so hard in there. And you can tell the students love to be in there and working. Um, So today you have a big day. Tell us what um, event you have going on today. Today is the Rookie Welding Contest. This was, um, I come up with this several years ago, probably, gosh, 12 plus years ago. I'm not sure. When I got to thinking that this might be a way to make our district a little more competitive at the state level because it would give us one more practice contest for uh, for the kids where they'd be a little more calm, been there, done that. And it seems to have helped some because, for instance, like last year, Logan Johnson came in second in the state level, so I was pretty impressed, pleased with him. And I think over the years it has helped our our district a lot. What it is is there's seven schools in our competitive district in regional, and they get to bring two rookie welding students, first year kids, and then we uh, we compete. We build a, a project and do a cutting project, and. Uh, then that's graded, and it's just for fun and experience, and plus we give them some prizes. Yeah, and they're usually pretty nice prizes. Oh, yes. Very good. And so do you think most, um, like for you, for instance, do you have an in-house kind of competition to figure out who your two rookie welders get to be? <laughs> Sometimes it's difficult to pick, but this year, I hate to say it, I've got two ringers. I, I, they're just very impressive. They, just, they really rose to the top. That's awesome. Okay. And then, so after you have this rookie welding, which that's great too, they get to get out of, out out of their school, come to another tech center and, um, practice what the real, um, real, um, competition will be like. So then you have regionals is where the first, the regionals are in February and the high school level, if they're in the top three, they get to go to state and adult, the top two go to state. Now we have two different contests. We have the fabrication contest, which is a team of three working together. They give you a set of a pile of steel, a set of plans, and they say build this in a certain time limit, which the time limit is pretty crunched. They have to really get after it. And then the regular welding contest, you're an individual trying to beat out everyone else. And you also have a small project that shows off your weld skills. Okay. Um, so in your class what are some of the you guys usually work on um, quite a few projects through the year is that correct our project our class is project driven we uh we've we have found that we learn so much more by working on other people's projects and using their metal which saves the school money and people are dying to have things built for them Uh, one of our favorite projects is building fire trucks but unfortunately we flooded the market and no one else needs any more fire trucks. <laughs> they got some nice fire trucks out there. Yeah, that was pretty awesome. The projects I've seen in there, stock trailers, um, stairs, all, all sorts of stuff. Um, so tell us about some of your previous students and where they're at now, some of your success stories. Well, I, I have a lot of students that are out and doing very well, and some of them I have lost contact with. Well, you know, after you're this old, you lose some <laughs> contact with some people. But, for instance, um, Antonio Alvarado, um, he's in a pipeline job up in Montana right now. And Charlie Baeza goes out in the Texas Panhandle a lot. Those are two guys that are on pipelines constantly. <clears throat> um, Tyson Hopper still welds some. And, uh, of course, I've... You know, the one I can for sure hang my hat on is like Travis Case at Moreland at Case Welding. He employs several people uh, really doing well. And 
Calvin White, um, he employs a whole lot of people in the community. And those two guys are very giving and uh, just great community people. Yeah, that's great. Um, and that's nice to have some contacts for your students when they graduate and pass their tests you to, bet. to I, go I, check into. They still use me as some reference and, and some information, but I use them quite a bit more uh, as to get a feel for what's going on. Um, find new places for my uh, students to go to and just get an overall better feel for how the field is going. Uh, one of them I forgot about, it was Valencia Whiteman. She lives out by Sepulpa, and she runs a shop. And she's the, the manager and the boss in that shop, and she just loves it. And she does all the fine TIG work in that, in that shop. Um, so tell us um, a little bit how the the year goes. Um, do you progressively learn? What is tell us about welding? What they're learning? Um. Pretty well the way it works. When the rookies come in, we take our basic safety test that allows them to just arc weld only, and we hit the booth. Well, I've got them. In, we're running beads on day two. That's so they can hurry up and make up their mind. Hey, do I really want to be here or not? Because in, in my outfit, hard work is, is what cuts it. You, you don't have to be, you know, you can get by with not being real smart. I can make, I can make it work. I can help you out. But you got to work hard. Now, I've got both ends of the spectrum. I've got people that are all kinds of honoraries at their high school, clear down to people that they're going to be lucky to pass. And you mix all them together with adults – um, you know, one time I had an adult that's 52 years old, so you never know for sure what's going to show up and mix all those people together. And uh, like I say, we, we stick them in the booth on day two and they owe me 16 wells that have to be of a quality before they can even touch a project. And when, and also in there, we mix in, we get them, uh, safety out on the torch so they can cut their own plates. And then as we progress, we safety out on each machine and then all of a sudden we're just on projects all the time. And generally on those projects, they work on, in pairs or threes or fours, depending on how big it is. Like a fire truck, everyone touches a fire truck. And they have to plan the project, make a bill of materials, order the materials, build a project, and then they have to make the customer happy and then recover any funds that are owed to the school. Yeah, that's that's pretty intense project. So there's a lot of learning they get they get to have on those. And any um, donations or extra fees that come off those projects that goes into their student account, and they get to spend that on on themselves. So they enjoy that. That's awesome. Um, so tell us about the final um, exam that they would have for this program. Okay, toward the end of school, like when we got two or three weeks of school left, we will take the six G state Oklahoma pipe test and that is like our final exam i want every single student to take that test once you know they don't all take it but i want them to all take it and that qualifies them for all the plate tests and um, most of their pipe tests so that's a universal really good test and then they get their card and that's their you know their their bragging rights i've got my card i'm a real welder now Awesome. And you also open up that test to um, just oh, yeah. We, local. We, yeah. We let a lot of people come in off the street and we use this, the, we've used the same tester and his son since, since the school started in 82, I believe. Wow. That's pretty awesome. So Tracy, is there anything else you want to tell the um, listeners about your program or just High Plains in general or just anything else you'd like to say? Well, I would really like to thank a lot of people that, that help us. Woodward Steel lets us have all the practice metal we want, and then when we're done with it, we take it back. So it's a win-win situation, and they help us on many things. And then we have good supporters like Jeff and Josh Wilson at Petroleum Services who gives us pipe whenever we need it. And uh, I was actually admonished one time because I bought some six-inch pipe when he told me, oh, I've got all this. So. Um, I got a lot of people that take care of us, and, and Travis helps us out, and Calvin helps us out, and Charlie comes in and, and helps, and so does Antonio. So we we've got a lot of support by our former people as well. That's awesome. All right, well, thank you, Tracy, for um, coming on today, and we just hope everyone has a good day. Thank you.